Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This night is a most holy night for the Christian church. It is the night in which the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper, his holy meal, that place where he promised to be for you and for me in a very real, real way. When he gives himself to eat, he gives himself for us to eat and to drink in some mysterious yet very real way. Today he touches those. He physically touches those who receive the sacrament. And today I want to talk about why this is such a blessed gift. When God created the heavens and the earth, he made us physical beings. He made us to be those who have a body and who have a soul. We are not souls trying to escape the physical world. No, when God created us, he created us with a body and with a soul, and he said, this is very good. If you've been around me at all in any of my teachings, you know this is a point that I stress time and time again. We are not trying to escape our bodies. God made our bodies. God has redeemed our bodies in the work of Jesus Christ. We are meant to be both body and soul for all eternity. And in fact, God wants to be with us in a very real, in a very physical way. We know that this is how God operated. God came close to humanity in a physical way from the very beginning of time. Hear what it says in the book of Genesis. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Moses writes this as revealed to him by God. Moses writes this in a way that it is almost an offhand comment that God was just simply walking around the garden, that God was simply there with his creation in a very real, in a very touchable, tangible way, as if it would not be strange for God to walk through the front door. God is walking in the garden. Most likely, we have the second person of the Trinity, the pre-incarnate Christ, walking as a part of creation in a very real, in a very touchable way. We talk about how God desires to be present with us all the time, don't we? We desire God's presence around us, with us, as we go through difficult things in life. And that's very important. Physical presence is an important thing. Have any of you experienced a, a tragedy in life? Maybe uh, somebody very close to you died. Maybe a, a parent, maybe a friend or something along those lines. Or maybe you have gone through something very difficult in your life. And if you've ever been around a circumstance like that, people will oftentimes say different things to you, right? They'll say, well, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. And that's nice to know that people are thinking about you. And it's a good thing to pray for those who are suffering, 
In fact, God calls us to do that, and those are good and right things to do. But how do people love you when you are suffering? Well, oftentimes, people will identify something very important. They will identify not what people said. They will identify not with with all sorts of a card that was sent. But they will identify the people that were simply with them. The people who were simply with them in the struggles and tragedies that they were going through. Because we are physical creatures. We need physical connections with the people around us. And so we deal with this reality that God continues to deal with us as physical beings. God continues to give to us his physical presence in, yes, a mysterious way, but a very real, touchable, tangible way in which he says, this is my body and this is my blood. This is what this gift truly is. Love is seen when we are close in a physical way. If you've ever tried to love someone, you know how that is as well, right? Have you ever really needed to be in about nine different places at one time? You say, well, I need to be with my child who is doing this because I want to show that I love them. But I need to be with my friend who is struggling with this and I I need to be with them. And I need to be with my mom and my dad who are not doing real well health-wise. And all of a sudden, I need to be in about nine different places at one time. And loving becomes a challenge. Loving becomes something that it it becomes a burden, not in a bad way, but in a burden, in, in a good way. It burdens our heart because we know we need to be all of these different places and be all of these different things to people because we know the importance of that physical presence. Yet God created us in a physical way and we are limited to one place at one time and yet we know we need to love. Jesus is very aware of this reality and that should make sense, right? He is one who created us. He made us. He has has designed the world as part of the Godhead. He was there at creation so he knows how things work. And in the upper room part of the gospel reading of John, we don't get the words of institution as we do in the three other gospels. Those come to us more. uh, He talks about the Lord's Supper in John 6. But we get a different story. We get a different part of what happened on that night. And it is actually connected to what I'm talking about here tonight. Jesus loves his disciples. And so he washes their feet. He humbles himself before them, and he actually washes their feet. And as good old Peter so oftentimes does, he starts to kind of push back a little bit. Peter starts to say, Jesus, no, you're not washing my feet. If anything, I'll wash your feet, but you're not washing my feet. Peter is almost offended that Jesus would dare wash his feet. And as Jesus so oftentimes does with Peter, he he gently rebukes him and, and says, no, this is what I have come to do. I have come to love you in a very real, tangible, and touchable way. And then he says, well, fine, just wash my head, wash my hands. And he's, no, I'm washing your feet, Peter. 
If you've ever been in a part of a, a service, sometimes they will incorporate the washing of the feet into a, a service. If you've ever been a part of that, uh, you might realize how uncomfortable most specifically Americans are with that practice. I, I, I'm not going to invite you forward to, to wash your feet. If you want your feet washed, I will wash your feet, but uh, we will, we'll do it after the service. How about that? But I think that reveals something a little bit about us. We want Jesus close enough, but maybe not that close. We want to be loved, but maybe not that loved. Because it is a vulnerable thing in our culture to let people see your feet. To let people wash your feet is, is somehow thought to be gross or, or, or something foreign to how we act. And so it, it almost is off-putting. It's almost oh, offensive like Peter. An interesting connection there. We would rather keep our socks on and our shoes on and our stinky feet away from anyone else so that they cannot offend others. But here's the deal. Yes, Jesus does know how gross or not gross your feet are, but that's not the point. He sees everything about you. He knows every thought that you have. He knows every thing that you have done. He knows every pain that you have experienced. He knows everything in that way. For he is God. He already knows. He already knew at this point what you would do before you even existed. For he is a divine and yet he still enters into the mess of this world. He still enters into the grossness of this world. He still enters in even though he realizes every horrible, disgusting thing that you and I have ever done and will do. And he still comes close to you. He still comes close with forgiveness, he still comes close to love you. That is who Jesus is. He is one who is willing to enter into your mess. He was willing to enter into your mess and be a part of it so that you would have forgiveness. Jesus seeks to be close to each of us. And he can actually do this in this holy meal in which he, wa which he instituted on this night. In a very real, in a very physical way. Though it's mysterious and it is miraculous, this is what he has promised to do. To be with you. To touch you for your forgiveness come close to you in your mess because he loves you and he cares for you. Now our minds say, how can this be? And even some of our brothers and sisters in other confessions will deny this reality and it absolutely is a denial of the very words of Jesus and this breaks my heart that they would not simply cherish the gift that Jesus so freely offers. He is physical, he is a human, and he is divine. And his divine nature allows for him to do something that we can't do. He can be in many places at one time, physically. Just as he walked through walls after his resurrection, he can be on our altars across the world Anywhere he desires to be. Wouldn't that be something? If we could be in all nine of those places that we wish we needed to be. 
Yet our Savior, Jesus Christ, can be, and he is for you and for me and for all those who receive his body and blood in faith for the forgiveness of sins. This is one way that he loves us and continues to strengthen us in all that we do. He is one who already knows all about you, and he still shows up. He still shows up to wash your feet. He still shows up to forgive your sins. He still shows up every time we, as the body of Christ, gather together, just as he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Not simply spiritually, but in the supper physically. He is here for you this day. Come and receive the grace of God in faith. In Jesus' name, amen.